Herzlich willkommen beim 36. DocFest hier in München, DocFest at Home, auch dieses Jahr noch einmal. Was besonders ist, wir sind im Deutschen Theater und können hier in einer ganz besonderen Atmosphäre die Q&As für das Publikum machen. Mein Name ist Sebastian Sorg. Ich bin froh, heute das Publikumsgespräch zu führen mit Ibrahim Musal, der uns jetzt live zugeschaltet ist, also für mich live, aus Oslo. Ähm, bevor wir starten, möchte ich darauf hinweisen, dass dieser Film im Doc Panorama läuft, seine Deutschlandpremiere hat und deswegen auch für den Publikumspreis gestiftet vom Bayerischen Rundfunk und Dreisat nominiert ist. Die Teilnahmebedingungen und äh, der Weg, wie Sie abstimmen können, finden Sie auf der Webseite vom Dogfest München. Das ist ein wichtiger Preis für die Filmemacher, denn wer ihn gewinnt, der zeigt, dass er nicht nur einer kleinen Jury gefallen hat, sondern auch dem großen, großen Publikum. Und das ist für die Filmemacher oft ja, nicht wichtiger, aber sehr, sehr wichtig. Gut, so. Hi Ibrahim, it's great to have you here. Hi, hi Sebastian and thank you for that introduction. I didn't understand anything, but uh, I'm sure it was a positive <laughs> intro. But thank you to you and to the DocFest München uh, program uh, jury or committee for uh, inviting me and inviting the film to the DocFest München. Well, we're talking now about your piece, The Art of Sin, in one hour, more or less one hour mm -hmm. movie. Yeah. You were uh, filming Uh, with and on Ahmed Umar um, for, if I understood right, for four years. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, four, four years. And uh, I think it's very impressive how you achieved to, um, to finish a film which is not only a portrait on an artist, on a really fascinating artist. You also uh, did a, a film on a very, I, I would say, me uh, doing films as a filmmaker in countries uh, with repressions on a, on a theme uh, uh, which is dealing with death penalty uh, on LGBT in Sudan. And at the end, it's also on identity. Mm -hmm. And if I understood right, and that would be my first question, um, if I understood right in the film, which I had to watch twice because I was fascinated by it, I really have to say. Um, thank you, thank you. If I understood right, you are a Sudanese uh, who was born and raised in Norway and came back to Sudan for your education, for higher ed education. Uh, and you're meeting a person who was born and raised in Sudan and had to flee from uh, this country to Norway um, in order to, to live and to work and later on uh, to have his uh, coming out. So that's really, it's, it's something which I have, I would say, never seen before. It's, it's really fascinating for me that more and more you're thinking about what you have seen. So the first thing is, of course, um, how did you meet him and why Norway? Uh, Thank you, first of all, for, for, for this beautiful words about the film. It, it makes me very happy. Uh, and uh, uh, Ahmed Omar is a very interesting person uh, in, in many different ways. He's someone who kind of breaks with all, the, all your uh, uh, assumptions and, and, and things, your expectations of, of, of uh, a picture, a stereotype that we have in our mind of artists, of uh, uh, LGBTQ people, of... Uh, 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 refugee picture. So, so there is a lot of expectations that, that he breaks. Uh, I met Ahmed through um, when, so, so I was born in Norway and when I was around seven years old, my entire family left to Sudan to, 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 to live in Sudan. So I grew up in, in Sudan and then I came back to Norway. And on my way back to Norway, uh, I had a friend and he was like, oh, you're going back to Norway. Yeah, you're a filmmaker. There is this other guy, his name is Ahmed Umar, and he's an artist studying art at that time. He was studying in the university. Uh, and, you know, film and art, he said he's a painter. So film and painting, maybe you two can meet and, and, and come up with something fun, you know. Uh, because in Norway, I didn't know anyone at that time uh, back in Norway. 
So when I came, arrived in Norway, I opened his Facebook, uh, looked at his picture, very interesting guy. And I said, all right, uh, hopefully I'll, I'll meet him. I didn't take contact. I didn't contact him immediately, but I said, at least now I know how he looks. I know his name. We will definitely meet, meet each other because Oslo is very small in, in that way, you know. And then we didn't meet for, for two years, actually, uh, until uh, one morning I wake up and, you know, when, when something big has happened and you have like different messages, notifications on your phone and people are calling you and it's like something has happened. So I was like, in the beginning, I was afraid. I was like, did someone die or something bad happen? And then I remember talking with a friend and this is when I woke up, like literally in the morning, you know, and he's like, yo, open your Facebook. You people in Norway are going crazy. What the hell is this? And, and he was like, uh, kind of like screaming at my face in a way. Like, what the hell is going on, man? I was like, what's going on? So I open Facebook and it's like an explosion. Uh, and I see the guy that I know and I was supposed to meet, Ahmed Omar. He's wearing this super Sudanese uh, uh, traditional clothes and he's writing, I am coming out as gay. And that was like, I come from a super religious background. Uh, and uh, the question of being gay in Sudan is, is not just a taboo. This is like the ultimate taboo. Mm -hmm. And for someone like him to actually say it out loud and come out, it was like, it was a shocking thing, you know? And I was like, I was supposed to meet this guy. Mm -hmm. And now here he is in front of me and, and he created a storm, you know? In, in the social, Sudanese social media and Middle Eastern social media. Uh, because uh, most probably, most probably, he's the, the first openly person, uh, openly gay person from, from Sudan. Uh, so it was, uh, immediately I had this, this idea of, I have so many questions. Like, why would you do this? You were living in Norway, kind of safe. Why, why do you need to open this door on yourself and your family? I had those questions. And it was like a curiosity thing. So I took contact with him and he agreed. And that was the start of, of this journey that went on for four years. So that's the long answer of how me and I met. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, since you finished the filmmaking now with him, um, did this film after this uh, first release in Norway and now the German premiere here uh, have any effect and consequences for him, for you, for your families? Yeah. Um, I mean, we expected, we expected uh, while making the film and especially as the premiere neared, we knew that there will be reactions because of the topic. Uh, as I said before, Uh, the LGBTQ question is one of the biggest taboos uh, uh, in Sudan. It's something that nobody uh, uh, talks about and it's actively kind of buried underground, you know. Uh, so we knew there will be a reaction, but uh, I personally didn't expect the reaction to be so big. Uh, we had uh, almost 100,000 views of the trailer uh, in the first 12 hours of the release of the trailer. Uh, we got a lot of messages, uh, hate mail, death threats, a lot of stuff uh, that were negative, that we expected. But the amazing thing, the beautiful thing was also we got uh, an equal amount of supportive messages, of uh, messages saying this is important that we talk about this, uh, uh, that... In a way, I, I mean, was expecting, but I didn't realize it will be 50-50, you know. Mm. And that was, that was the really beautiful and eye-opening uh, uh, moment to, to just realize uh, that what we created was, was in a way opening this interesting big uh, conversation uh, in a moment in Sudan generally with the political situation in Sudan after a revolution uh, where a lot of Sudanese people are asking themselves questions about who are we and how are we going to Uh, uh, build a society and what society are we going to build to open this question about okay but what about the LGBTQ uh, uh, people in Sudan uh, uh, and it was it was a very positive uh, uh, surprise for me to, to I expected the negative but I, I didn't expect the positive out of it the, the support and, and the supportive uh, uh, documents uh, families were kind of well 
uh, well, they wouldn't, I wouldn't say they were very positive. They were like, why did you do this? But uh, they know I'm a filmmaker and, and, and I gave them a heads up before the film was finished. I was like, I made this film about this topic. And when it comes out, it probably will create a lot of, uh, you know, uh, uh, frictions between you and other people. So just uh, have, have like that heads up, you know. So, so they were expecting it and uh, it went well, it went well at the end. And for Ahmed also, it was, Ahmed is, the funny thing is, um, this was new to me, you know, getting death threats and getting abused online. It was new to me and Ahmed was like, welcome to the club, you know, this is what he gets every day. So uh, uh, for him, he also got, of course, a, a part or the biggest part of, of all the responses were to him because the film is about him. But uh, uh, he, this is not the first time for him. So, so uh, it was, uh, uh, it's kind of like ironic and sad to say, but he was used to it in a way. But uh, uh, he, he helped me actually through it to, to navigate it. He was like, don't, don't let it get to you. It's not personal. It's not about you. Uh, he, he made me like see the, the bigger picture. I think one of the big uh, strengths and qualities of your film um, is that your storytelling works with you in a very subtle way because um, for an audience that is not part of the LGBTQ community uh, and who maybe hesitates to get closer to this theme or um, I mean maybe there are so many people in Sudan or somewhere else who think that maybe one of their sisters, one of their family members or friends uh, could be a gay or lesbian or something. And, and by identifying yourself with this filmmaker who goes that way, who has his uh, doubts at the beginning and his questions, and uh, you're, you're giving the chance um, to go with, he, with him and, and to have a, a relation. It's like an anchor where you can always like, like rest and, and see like, okay, uh, what question is he asking? And um, how is he also, um, like how is your uh, personal relationship in front of the camera um, changing? Because at the beginning you're sitting in front of each other and then in the middle of the film there's this beautiful picture when you're standing next to each other, which is really very, very, very like, in a filmic way, uh, astonishing, like, because it's just, it's honest and it's working and it's not doing uh, like something else as it should. So um, if we're watching the film, it's very calm and, and easy going in a way. It's not like you have one bomb after the other. It's more or less like, I wonder, could you show that film in Sudan? Are you playing to bring it yeah. to Sudan? Uh, where can people watch the film? Um... And that's our main goal. And that's the reason I made it for, for, for mainly a Sudanese audience, for the Sudanese people to watch it. And it's true what you were saying, and I'm very happy and thankful that you were saying it, uh, because it was something... Uh, um, my role in the film was always a discussion, especially in the editing process. When I first met Ahmed, the concept of the, the idea I had was very simple. I'm going to have an interview with him. I'm going to ask him a lot of questions uh, uh, that I personally uh, uh, want to know. Like I personally had a curiosity. I had so many questions. Ahmed was in a way the first openly gay man I ever sat down with. Uh, uh, and as a person who was... Uh, heterosexual who grew up in a very conservative uh, society who always heard stereotypes and bad things about uh, LGBTQ people, for me to have that opportunity uh, uh, to actually sit down with, 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 with someone who is gay and, and, and have that space of asking all these questions, all these things that I heard about or thought about, and for him to be open and, and kind of in a way, it's not the minority's uh, job to educate people who are, uh, 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 in a way, uh, demonizing them. But Ahmed was generous enough to actually say, yes, okay, I'll answer all your weird questions and kind of embarrassing questions you have to me. Uh, 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 and that was a very eye-opening uh, experience for me. Uh, uh, and that was, in a way, the beginning of the film, the beginning of the concept of the film. It's just going to be an interview, a conversation, where I just ask all these questions, and then that's it. But as the more I started to ask, the more I actually started to 
become more interested in not the gay person, but Ahmed as a human, the human behind the, the label. Uh, and, and, and that's when, when, when I found the, the film. It's about this artist, this guy who has so many different identities inside of him and the process he's going through uh, uh, in, in, in kind of affirming his, in, and building his own identity, identity building process. Uh, which is something I personally was going through, having been born in Norway to uh, parents from Sudan and Somalia and, and different places. And I self had identity crises, if you can call it. So just to meet this person was doing it so elegantly, so uh, uh, with so much confidence in himself and meeting all these obstacles. Uh, uh, he's, he's someone who is meeting daily abuse like the amount of abuse he gets was like completely shocking for me I was like how can someone uh, tolerate all this abuse that he is getting and despite all of that he is not angry he is not uh, hurtful uh, vengeance he's he's just educating he's just answering replying to all these hate mails and all these different uh, aspects uh, for me it was an eye-opening thing and, and it's why I want to show it in Sudan, because uh, I made it for a, for a Sudanese society. It's not, this film is not made for someone who says, yay, LGBTQ, everybody, uh, love is love for everyone. Uh, the, the film is for them, of course, but it's more for people who are in the, you know, the movable middle. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they know of gay people, but they never had a direct a relationship with someone who is LGBTQ and never had that opportunity to actually ans ask and answer and, and have that conversation of, of let's get to know each other, let's get to know our realities. Uh, so, so, so this film is, is for, for, for Sudan and that's what we have been working on and working for and that uh, will happen soon, hopefully. And you think it's possible to show it in Sudan? <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's difficult uh, and it's something we've been uh, uh, thinking about and planning for a long time, uh, mm -hmm. uh, how we're going to do it. Uh, of course, uh, safety of the people who participated in the film is very important, yes. but also the safety of people who will be invited to a screening because uh, it's not just being part of the film, but the idea of watching this type of film can actually put you in, 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 mm -hmm. a, in a problem. So uh, one thought is, is streaming, streaming uh, solutions where everyone is at their own home and they can watch it on their own space and place and, and security of their own home. But we are also uh, uh, working on, on a little bit bigger, uh, safer uh, uh, spaces where we will have these screenings. And we have, uh, the beautiful thing is uh, our co-producer in this film and uh, part of the people who appeared in the film are uh, the, or one of the biggest or the main LGBTQ organization uh, working with LGBTQ people in, Su in Sudan, oh. inside the country. Okay. So we are in, 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 in very close contact and direct communication with them uh, uh, to see how we can use this film uh, to start a conversation. Did the families watch the film after it was finished? Uh, yeah, uh, some, some of the families watched the film. And uh, one big part of this film is uh, the relationship between Ahmed and his mother. It was even a surprise for me when we were editing just to realize this. It's, it's, it's basically a film about a guy who wants to meet with his mother. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, it resonated in, in test screenings and in the festivals we, we've been to so far. It was one of the things that I didn't expect we planned it, but we didn't expect it to land as hard as it did. And mm -hmm. it is actually one of the most emotional things that everyone who watches the film comes up to us and is like, uh, like uh, especially mothers, people who have like uh, 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 children uh, who are in the same age of, of, of Ahmed. They all came uh, to us after the film crying and they're like, this is a beautiful film and, and I have to call my children. And it's like... Uh, so we realized suddenly like we had a film that works well with mothers. So, so it kind of made us think, okay, but how can we go to this very specified uh, uh, group of people and reach them inside Sudan, but also outside Sudan? Oh, but I'm not a mother, but I can assure you that it worked <laughs> with me as well. So, <laughs> um, 
one question would be working um, as a director, being part of the film, of the process, uh, working um, as a portrait uh, and, and as an artist who has to let go control because I, we, as we learn to know him, we understand that he knows very much in detail how we want to prepare to incinerate scenes, pictures. How was your relationship? How did it change? Was it difficult? Was it, I mean, it was not only in his studio, it was also mm. doing traveling. It was in dangerous situations. I mean, there's such a high amplitude. Uh, mm. Is there anything you can tell us about this and how it maybe changed? Uh, that's a very good question, actually. And it's something that I'm very thankful for Ahmed to. Because I told him, actually, I was like, if the situation had changed and you as an artist who is making a film about me, I don't know if I would have said yes. Because as you said, Ahmed is an artist and he's not just any artist. He is someone with a very clear idea visually of how things should appear and look. He is super detail oriented. So for him to not just allow me into his life, but to actually give away that power, the power of his preciseness, of, of him not being in control of how things will look or, or how the story will be edited. It was, it was a big, it was for me, the, one of the biggest motivations uh, uh, that someone trusted you this much. So I have to do a good job because the amount of trust he placed in me was incredible. I told him, I, I joke with him till today, I don't know if I, I would have trusted you the same amount as you trusted me if the situation was changed because it is extremely difficult uh, uh, to give away that type of control uh, and, and, and to let someone else introduce you so intimately. So it was something I was very thankful for and it was my, my biggest motivation. Uh, and it, it, it developed because this was four years. So it developed throughout the time and, and we became closer and closer. And uh, uh, it was also important that he is involved. The communication channels were open all the time. Like I was telling him about all the thoughts I had and stuff like that uh, uh, until the editing process came. And then uh, uh, me and the editor had to, to, to kind of close the doors. Uh, so we could uh, create uh, uh, the film that uh, we, we wanted to create. Uh, but Ahmed was, uh, uh, it, it was a beautiful thing that I, I will be forever grateful for. This, this type of trust, you know, this, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of like a vulnerability that makes you really realize what kind of responsibility you have. And, and it was a great motivator for me. Uh, uh, it was like, uh, this person trusted you this much. Don't, uh, don't mess this up, you know. Beautiful. So he's happy with the film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, talking about the three areas about um, the artist portrait, the LGBTQ uh, thematic, and also identity, um, do you? think that this film and making this film also changed your own um, um, relation to your home country, to your identity? Yes, definitely, definitely. Thank you for a very good question. Uh, it, it changed me uh, very much, to be honest. And, uh, and it changed how I view my own identity process, what is uh, fundamental to, to my own identity. Uh -huh. uh, as you said uh, very well, it's, it's a film with, with three aspects. So there is an identity sector, there is an artist part, and there is uh, the LGBTQ uh, uh, part. And, and Ahmed's life story, not life story, but in, in this film, what we follow is the identity building process. There is someone who has uh, a very interesting uh, and difficult challenge. He has two parts of his own identity, the Sudanese identity and the gay identity. He is very proud of both. He's a proud Sudanese man. He's a proud gay open man. But the two parts of him are in conflict with each other. The Sudanese society is, is very against uh, LGBTQ people in law and in societal uh, norms. 
And this for me was a very interesting process to follow. You know, here, here we have someone with an unique identity, I don't know, crisis, challenge. Mm-hmm. You, I met a lot of people who had similar identity problems. And usually the easy way out is to uh, let go of one part. To just say, no, I don't want to be part of, uh, of this. I, uh, personally, I know a lot of, of, of people who grew up in a conservative Muslim society, as I did. And then they come to another place or flee because of it, because of this conservatism. And uh, understandably, they choose to, for example, become ex-Muslims. They are not Muslim anymore, uh, which is an understandable situation when it's part of the uh, oppression that you are uh, uh, going through. And I would expect this was one of the stereotypes and expectation I had in my mind before I met Ahmed. I was like, I'm going to meet a westernized guy who has let go of all his Sudanese roots and his Sudanese identity, and is now a Western, uh, openly gay guy who doesn't care about where he came from. And this was my stereotype before I met him. And it was one of the first shocks that I I received was meeting him. And he is the most Sudanese guy you can meet ever. He speaks in in a dialect, the way he acts, the clothing, everything he does is not just Sudanese, it's extremely Sudanese. And for me, that was like, whoa, like, okay, this is very interesting. Instead of giving away on giving up on his Sudanese identity, he said, no, he actually went tighter in and held it closer to him. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm gonna be Sudanese on my own way and my own terms. And that for me was like an eye opening thing and very liberating uh, idea that uh, nobody has the right to decide how you're going to be Sudanese or how you're going to be Muslim or how you're going to be, I don't know, whatever uh, label or identity you have. It's up to you and you build it yourself. And that is one of the biggest things I learned uh, uh, during the, the filmmaking process. The liberating aspect is really one of the most beautiful ones and one uh, which when I was watching it twice on a small screen, I really thought that you you did it so well. You have these wonderful sceneries in the desert uh, at the pyramids and um, wonderful um, dialogues uh, together uh, on on this very liberating um, aspect that that that's also an important aspect for everybody like uh, for many modern men who are consequently like uh, finding uh, having new families somewhere else like moving the whole society mm-hmm. on the world is moving and i thought it, it i was very surprised and thought like wow this man gives us uh, answers to everybody not only on an lgbtq uh, theme mm-hmm. but also uh, thank you very much for this so my last question brings us uh, right back to the beginning and uh, i was just too curious maybe it's it's a very small question but why norway so, I mean, you were born in Norway as Sudanese, Sudanese parents. Some reason, maybe you work and travel, I don't know what. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, Ahmed uh, had to flee to Norway. Why to Norway? Yeah. I mean, it's, I, I would think it's just too cold. Maybe as some reason, maybe as a personal reason, we don't have to know. But uh, if you can answer it, I personally would it be was... very thankful because I was just so curious. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually a very good question. And it uh, and becomes a more uh, important question knowing that uh, You know, uh, the refugee question, especially in the past years, it has become a big part of the the conversation we are having. And uh, it's very interesting to know. I worked with a lot of refugees. Uh, I come from refugee parents. My parents, although I grew up in Sudan and I'm Sudanese, but my parents, both of them are from Somalia. So I'm Somali, Sudanese, Norwegian. So I have like these three uh, identities. So I'm, I'm, I'm a son of refugees. And the thing with, with, with being a refugee is sometimes you don't choose where you end up. It's just literally can become uh, someone you know is there uh, or you heard, you read somewhere something and you just end up there. You don't know anybody. It's a very difficult, for Ahmed, he, he had no idea about Norway. Like it wasn't like a very specific choice he made. He was like, I'm going to this country specifically uh, it was, uh, he heard about uh, the LGBTQ situation in Norway, and it's, it's a very open country and it's good. And uh, he said, all right, let me, let me try to get there. Uh, and and it's, it's, 
it kind of makes you understand how how this whole concept of national borders and nationalism is very fragile you know it's it's basically something none of us control you know your parents could have uh, uh, gave birth to you in in any country by luck and and you would have been a national of that country or uh, when your situation changes you move from one place to another place and 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 suddenly your entire life changes and you have to start anew in a new place and then build a new home in a way and 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 it makes you realize how how fragile this whole concept of nationalism is you know when when you think about it in detail but for ahmed to answer your question it was it, there wasn't very specific strong reason it was almost like blind luck you know it was a place he read somewhere that it's a safe country and good country and he said all right let me try to get there great so at the end, it was a reason to bring you both together and you as a filmmaker making a really, um, I would say, a really impressive film to me. Thank you. Thank and you very much. And we really want to thank you very much. I hope you're the best. Hope best to your film and really thank best you. wishes to Ahmad and tell him that we are really happy to show this film here in Munich. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much.